So this video is called How Reddit Ruined Atheism. I saw Asmin reacting to it and I didn't watch it, but I really was tempted to. So I thought, let's watch it together instead. I'm excited to watch this. I was just complaining about how the atheist community bubble, specifically in America, really cause a detriment to the relationship we're having with science. And so I'm very curious on how Reddit ruined atheism because I'm not a Redditor and I am very excited to hop into this like little bubble here and see what we can learn from it. So I've linked the video in the chat. Let's go ahead and give it a chance. I'm sure it'll be great. Today, we're gonna have a history lesson. So buckle up. Kashi just told me to have a blessed one. I know it's minor, but for some reason it got under my skin. Atheists aren't taken seriously as a marginalized group by anyone but ourselves. The best part about being an atheist is I can watch sport and work off all day without any guilt. A lot of times we don't ask questions for things we just know, even though we don't know why we know them. A banana is yellow. Yeah. But why is it yellow? Now, in your head, picture what you think a stereotypical atheist would look like. Probably something like Um, I'm sorry, is that Jimmy Neutron? Yes. Now, don't be alarmed. Why is that the typical atheist? That is not what I imagine. Is this the typical atheist for y'all? Is this the typical atheist? This was not the typical atheist I had growing up. But also, I will tell you this. Um... Back in the day, I did grow up where being an atheist was like the worst thing you could ever come out as. Like coming out as gay was the second worst, but coming out as an atheist was like, oh my gosh. Like I guess coming out as gay was probably worse, but as somebody who like grew up, you know, Catholic and moved to atheism, going to conferences, having access to other atheists, watching atheist debates was like life. And then you kind of got bored with that bubble because eventually you realize they're reductive, like the religious people. And so you kind of like, okay, let's move on. But it was a lifesaver having a community at the time. You've been trained to think this way, but why is this the case? Well, it's not due to atheism itself. In fact, most atheists you know are probably normal people. You might be one yourself and be a normal human being, but due to a small minority of internet atheists, hell-bent on being the most un oh my gosh maybe atheists do look like this i was thinking more like you know the <laughs> discord you wild oh man maybe he's right oh am i in i'm in denial do i look like this am i in denial i left the atheism bubble a while, a while ago okay but that's pretty funny actually I imagine more like Sam Harris or like a suit or like Matt Delahanty, but of course those are the leaders of the movement. So I suppose the the participants, the audience members of the movement might actually look like this. <sighs> Rip to fashion, bro. Annoying and unlikable people you can imagine, the public image has been completely destroyed. From a public image perspective, atheists went from pondering intellectuals like Richard Dawkins asking the tough questions to neckbeard losers who argue with people on the internet all day. But how did it come to this? Well, once we can understand the ancient Reddit atheists, we can understand why it sucks so much today. So let's go back to a simpler time, about 12 years ago. Reddit is a much different place than it is today. Still completely insufferable, but for different reasons. You see, when websites first start out, they usually try to pander to a specific demographic and then expand. For example, Facebook was mostly college students. Oh my God. Is, is that Mark? Is that Zuckerberg? He looks so tiny. Oh my God. He looks so tiny. Is that Mark Zuckerberg? He looks like a little baby. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's kind of crazy. Oh my God. Uh, Yida says, wait, are atheists like different from people who just don't believe in anything or is there more to it? Well, he's talking about a specific bubble, right? So he's talking about specific Reddit atheists, which I think is very um, different than just like atheist, right? Students, Instagram was for photographers and TikTok was for predators. Now, when Reddit first started out, it hey. was for a different demographic. Early Reddit was mostly tech bros, nerds, and- Again, I've never been a Redditor. I had a Reddit once. It was awful. I don't know how to do it. I don't understand that website. But I do think it's a nice place to go for certain things. Like, Reddit seems to be, like, a good source for information, but also, like, it's hard for my brain to navigate. It's, like, very loud as a website to me. I don't know why Twitter is much more digestible to me than Reddit. I wish I knew why. But Reddit's like very loud to me. Um, but this is about Reddit atheism specifically. And social outcasts. And what do these guys have in common? 
bad social skills. Call it. Well, I don't know what I'm calling for. You're gay or straight. <laughs> and superiority complexes. This leads to one natural conclusion. Atheism. Not really based on the belief of, well, not believing, but the aesthetic of atheism. The rational. Yo, the aesthetic is everything. I'm telling you, when you belong to a group, you're belonging to an aesthetic. I've realized this even, uh, you know, in general. Like, think of yourself in a, a, a category of, like, woman or gay or we just watched the jubilee video about different kinds of conservative and uh, liberal or leftist lesbians we had a discord event about it like think about the group you're a part of and then think about the aesthetic you're choosing to be a part of intelligent is aesthetic is a cope for so many people enjoying like oh i'm a stoic I, i'm into stoicism you've never read a book about stoicism bro okay oh i'm an atheist like i'm logical bro it's all about aesthetic. It's not even about like actually thinking about it or being interested in it. It's about feeling, again, you want to belong in a bubble. You want to think you know what the bubble represents and you want to think it's objective. And then you want to like make this boost your ego so you know you've chosen the right belief, right? Because you know, because you're so smart. And it's like, yeah, sure. Or probably not, but okay. No thinking, the sharp attire the calm demeanor to dismantle somebody's argument and leave them speechless. At least that was what was in their head. See, you have to understand, this early brand of atheism- Look, I feel like atheism or logic bros is like the nerdy guy's sports. It's like you couldn't do football or actual sports, so the only thing you could contend with was like intellectual sports. But then even that you suck in because it's like boring after a while. It's like we've had this conversation 20 times and we're not learning anything new. So it's like the blood sports of like, quote unquote, I'm smarter than you, which is why like if you can't fight it out physically, you're going to go this way, which to be fair is fine. It makes you feel good. You like feel superior over other people. It's fine. Like it's it's not even bad because I think that's some people need that competition to feel like they're alive. But I think that's what it is mostly, right? It's the aesthetic of being like, oh, oh, I remember I was at MythCon. Uh, Mythicist con because I was like a moderator or something. I don't remember why I was there. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I think was I a moderator that year or was I just a guest? I might have just been a special guest. I don't remember. But um, Sargon of Akkad and guys, what was that leftist? What was that leftist that w debated Sargon? What was his name? Oh my god, I'm blanking on his name right now. It was like a liberal guy and Carl. Like he basically they were yelling at each other and everyone was like, whoa, and it was like this big like silly thing. I got super anxious, but everyone was like yelling and I was like, oh, I don't like this environment. So it was really interesting because it's like the blood sports of talking, if you will, you know. Atheism has little to do with just atheism, but the presence of what an atheist represents. They weren't necessarily passionate about what it means to be an atheist. They just wanted to see themselves as smarter and different. And given they were using Reddit in 2000. Oh, people are so emotionally needy. That's the irony, right? He's so right. I love this guy already. It's so emotionally needy. Like people who claim they're like, I'm a logic bro. I'm not emotionally needy. Sir, what do you think this is? Like being the top dog, getting the, t it's emotional neediness. That's what you're doing. 10, let's just say they were outsiders. And these guys infested every corner of the platform back in the day. They were everywhere. Now, Reddit worked similar to how it does now, but the core demographic was more concentrated on geek. Oh, wait. Teal says, I thought their blood sport was playing video games. Mm. Not all atheists are gamers and not all gamers are atheists though, right? There is an overlap though with the gamer bubble and the atheist bubble that I think is pretty prevalent. But are we really sure that all atheists focus on video games? Because the atheists I'm thinking of, like they're not playing video games like that, you know? geeks who tried to adopt this aesthetic. Nowadays, it would be seen as lame to post about how your parents make you a 15-year-old that could be doing way cooler things like not hanging out with the friends you don't have, go to Sunday school, and you hate it. That would be seen as super lame to post now. Or maybe not, actually. I don't know. It depends on who we're dealing with. But we'll get into that later. Back in the day, this post would have been met with universal praise. Anything calling out how stupid it was would be destroyed. Because remember, most of the users in this time period were intellectually superior atheists. They were the majority on not just our atheism, but every board. Just to put into perspective how big their presence was, 
Reddit used to make default subreddits based on popularity, so if you logged into Reddit without an account, you'd be able to see the default most popular subreddits like gaming, funny, etc. And at the time, r slash atheism was one of these most popular default subreddits with their highly stimulating posts like my parents said i am too smart and these weren't just atheists these were super ultra instinct atheists. why is that so good atheists other atheists who said come on guys religion isn't all that bad <laughs> And as they got more popular, they got more bold with their moves. Because their sub was so popular, they could expand. They decided to put faces to their Reddit accounts. The faces of atheism, with some of their favorite quotes. Sometimes, when I meet a new person, religion comes up. At which point, they learn I'm an atheist. This is- The berserk music in the background? Wow. Very dope. Very dope. The moment when they feel the need to tell me there is something wrong with me, that they know what my problems are, and that they can in fact help. This once angered me. However, now I just wow. feel- Wow, nice guts, guts. feel sorry for them. They don't think, they know, they have all the answers. Of course, the truth is, none of us do. I just wish they were okay with that. <laughs> He's so small. Everyone is so young when they're young. Look how young everybody is. <laughs> Look, people need people. Okay? They want to thrive on the knowing. Are you serious? If you want to see more of these, there's a link in the description. Beautiful. You'd assume that all of these are joke posts, <sighs> but I promise you... Discord says, my parents say I'm too smart. Your parents love you. You're very pretty. Like, okay, up, oh, okay. Everybody slow down. Look, I love this. I love this. Like, look, we need community. We need to feel like we're good and we need to feel like we're smart enough. You know, sometimes when I talk, I'm incredibly worried. I'm incredibly worried that when I say like, um, I don't want to help people who can't help themselves. People are thinking I'm talking about them when I'm probably not talking about you. A lot of people think they can't help themselves. But I mean, like, even people who look like they're attempting aren't even doing it because they're looping in such a degree that I can't even engage, right? I can't even engage with you. When I say I don't help people that can't help themselves, I mean, I don't want to engage with somebody who doesn't recognize they're looping because you got to be able to recognize you're looping in order for me to help you. Like with these guys, they're having a relationship with their consciousness and they're trying to land in a bubble that represents them and makes them feel seen and heard. And I think that's very valid. But obviously there is like an unhappiness, like a lack of joy in some of these bubbles. You know what I mean? That I would encourage them to like ask themselves why they aren't feeling fulfilled. Why are they still feeling bitter or angry? But the question or the blame will always be on somebody else. Like if the blame is always on somebody else, you're not going to find your answer. So again, I don't like people who blame other people for their problems outside of the validation stage in recovery. You always have to go through a validation stage, I think maybe, where you have to like quote unquote, blame the world. But then you have to grow out of that stage and realize like it's you. You are the world. Like you are the reason you're mad. You know what I mean? It's always you. They are not. And here's why. This was back in 2012, a pre-ironic internet. Back then, we didn't have cringe humor expressed in memes. It was just advice animals or observational humor. So making a troll post like this at the time was not as common as it is today. But why am I showing you these? Because they're funny? Well, yes. But also, this is to show you that this is where the stereotype comes from. The fedora? Well, fedoras were seen as classy, and these guys were certainly that. I would never. My brothers are not allowed to own fedoras. They're not allowed to dress a certain way. We, Middle Eastern people, we're like, we might judge you and give you eating disorders, but we also make you look nice, fashionably speaking. So, you're welcome. In their eyes. Fat? They were nerds who didn't exercise. Neckbeards, they didn't know how to properly groom themselves, so instead of just shaving their neckbeard like most normal guys do, they would just grow it out. Now, these figures aren't necessarily rare these days. They still exist, but back in early Reddit times, these guys were everywhere, and no, they weren't joking. And I want to emphasize this further. At this point, it has nothing to do with atheism. It has to do with Reddit atheism, which are two completely separate things in my eyes. So ah, I agree. Different bubbles. I agree. With all of these guys running around with such great... Ooh. Um, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Uh, Amber says overlap with the incel community or pre-cells. Okay, 
This is what I love so much about bubbles because they're all so different but specific. So the atheist bubble might have a neck beard and they might be incels, but not all incels are atheists and not all atheists are incels. And then that's what's so beautiful about knowing what category you're in, right? Like you are in a specific category. Like for me, an individual could be like a new category. Any deviation makes me go, oh, new type of person, new type of person, new type of person. And then knowing which one you are in the story is like so beautiful. Like how many people who are Reddit atheists are watching this video and being like, that's me, that's me. You know, purple, let's go. $20 super chat. That's amazing. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hi back. Hello. Arguments as if bad thing happen, then why God let it? And does anybody else notice that religion bad? People started to get a bit. Also, can I just tell you as a former Catholic who's now like, I guess you could say atheist, agnostic, whatever. I don't care. Maybe there's a God. Maybe they're not. I don't have time for it. Listen. When people say, like, if God is real, why do bad things happen? Just, like, go watch a sunset. You are so intellectually stunted. That is such an intellectually stunted question. God exists. Why do bad things happen? Is genuinely one of the most just useless talking points I've ever heard in my life. I know you all have to go through a stage where you ask yourself that. But literally, literally makes no sense to ask that question especially when you're talking to religious people who believe in free will. It makes absolutely zero sense to ask that question out loud. Thank you. Bit annoyed. Will you two shut up? But because these guys were the mainstream, they controlled the upvotes. Until one day, somebody with the username AA Lewis made a post to r slash atheism that would shake the internet forever. This post might be the single most iconic post in internet history. Oh my God, I'm so excited, what? There is a time before this post and after this post, the pre-irony and post-irony. Welcome to a moment in history. So it starts out with the OP saying they came up with a quote just a few minutes ago and they thought the subreddit would enjoy it. They go on to clarify that they are not a professional quote maker. They're just an atheist teenager who greatly values their own intelligence and scientific fact over any silly fictional book written 3,500 years ago. I hereby present you with the quote, In this moment, I am euphoric. Not because of any phony God's blessing, but because I am enlightened by my intelligence. A. A. Lewis. What? In this moment, I am euphoric, not because of any phone God, phony God's blessing, but because I'm enlightened by my intelligence. <clears throat> Ugh. People who are obsessed with intelligence also so ick. Like when I hear like the IQ question, like I, can't, I roll my eyes so hard I give myself a migraine. Kay says it's a tutorial question. Do you mean like in a video, video game when you play the tutorial first to learn how to use the moves? Because I actually think I agree with that. You know what I mean? Basically, okay, Ripley says I don't get it. Basically, they're trying to say that like it's not God that makes me wow at the universe. It's my own intellect, right? That's what I'm reading it as. Am I too like neurodivergent for this? But that's what I'm reading it as. And it's like this whole like I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. Okay, Sure. Like, I don't know what that means to be intelligent, right? Like, what does that even mean? Some of the smartest people I know lack so much introspection. Like, so good, your intelligence, right? Do you have to cover your head with a fedora? Bro. Well, maybe you could use the help of today's sponsor, Keeps. Keeps oh, is an Keeps. online subscription service. My brother tried Keeps. He had a full head of hair, though, so, you know. Service that helps you retain your hair. Everyone knows with hair loss, the best way to go about it is to catch it before it gets bad. And Keeps is here to help you with that. They'll ship you discreet medication at yes, a fraction. Yes. Ah, Kay says your first question to reality. I could see that. The cost that you get it from other brands, and they'll deliver. Yeah, people who are obsessed with their own intelligence are the most arrogant. S agree, literally agree. Like I hate that question. Like Brittany, do it's a great question to ask. I suppose like. Brittany, do you need high IQ to be introspective? And I was like, some of the most high IQ people are the least introspective because they get lost in the bubble of their own intelligence. Like, it's kind of a curse. Like, it's the same as being like, what does intelligence even mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Some of the smartest people I know make the dumbest decisions. Like, watch the internet. Like this, like this Reddit post. Oh, intelligence. Look at my intelligence. Well, so much for your intelligence being useful. 
to your door. So if you want to get started with Keeps today, to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash ghost gum or click keeps. the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash ghost gum. Go check it Thank out. Thank you Keeps for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. This post was relentlessly mocked. It became the centerpiece of mocking these self-important atheists. Yo, this fashion vibe. Yo, mm, mm, you know? And it went super viral. First, it was posted on r slash cringe where it gained over 3,000 upvotes. Then somebody misattributed the quote to Neil deGrasse Tyson, an atheism hero. Then it got into 4chan then tumblr and by the way what is the least attractive thing about neil degrasse tyson his like his like his kind of like his his like um i don't want to say his arrogance because it's not it i like arrogance in people maybe it's the kind of arrogance i'm trying to figure out what kind of arrogance i like in people versus other people or confidence I like in other people. I really like Brie from Selling Sunset. And I'm like, why do I like her so much? And I just think like she'd be honest with me. And maybe that's why I like her. I think I like the ones that feel like they'd be really honest with me. So maybe like blunt. But Neil deGrasse Tyson just feels like he smells his own farts. Ugh, so gross saying that. But that's what it feels like. Even though I like him well enough, it just also feels like that. Then goddamn Urban Dictionary changed the definition of euphoric and used this post as an example. It went to the corners of normie internet like Facebook and bodybuilding forums. It was everywhere. And we all had a good life. I never knew this. I ne I'm not a part. I was never part of this bubble in this way. And because of this, people started making troll posts on r slash atheism. Now, these existed before, but not in this magnitude. They made a mockery of the whole persona they presented themselves as. This was essentially the birth of ironic memes, ironically pretending to be a smart up your ass atheist. And due to this, the previous aesthetic that they had established went from cool and mysterious to embarrassing and lame. Even hey, their- Hey, hey, leave the anime pillows out of this, bro. Idols like the amazing atheist and Bill Nye were seen as un- and lame. Even their idols like the amazing atheist and Bill Nye were seen as uncool by proxy. But I guess anybody would be seen as uncool if you shove a banana up your hey. ass. Like hey, 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 hey. That was leaked by an ex-girlfriend that was never meant to see the internet. That's kind of fucked up to bring up. That was revenge porn. The amazing atheist did not consent to that video being on the internet. That's kind of fucked up. That's revenge porn, bro. That's not cool. The girl who did that is really fucked up. Q and the uh, triple digits, I guess, whatever. It could be argued that this single post not only brought down the Reddit atheism aesthetic, but had massive ripple effects on internet humor and memes that we see today. And that is the story of how <laughs> Reddit ruined atheism. Reddit changed for the better, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> This attitude of, I am intellectually superior to you because I use Reddit, is most certainly not gone if you've watched any of the videos on my channel. It's still alive and just as bad. And so is r slash atheism, although it doesn't have the same influence or shimmer it once did, the posts there are still hilariously embarrassing. I am convinced that r slash atheism will be full of these self-flagellating basement dwellers until the end of time. But at least we can publicly laugh at them on their own platform now. And if you didn't know why a neck- Oof. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely art. Mm, I love it. Beard fedora atheist with a katana was a stereotype, well, now you know. I often get asked this and even ponder myself, why are Redditors so insufferable? <laughs> it is really the ultimate <laughs> question. And, I think it goes deep into the roots of the website. As we can see, this attitude of I am smarter than you and everyone else is an idiot stems back to the site's creation and still definitely exists today. Being so far up your own ass that you embarrass yourself and have zero self-awareness, it certainly hasn't changed. Go to any subreddit that talks about complicated things like politics. Whoa, 8 million members on our politics, 27.2 million members on our science. That's kind of nice. Science facts. Okay, okay. Politics, religion, or something along those lines, and observe <sighs> for yourself how many out-of-touch and embarrassing posts you can find 
from people who take themselves 100% seriously on a website where the mascot is an alien. Just for a second. Okay, quick story time. My, I dated a partner who at the time I was on Tumblr and he was on Reddit and he would have Reddit gatherings. So we would go to Golden Gardens in Seattle and he would put a, a Reddit flag in the sand and people from all around the Seattle or extended area would like drive in to have these Reddit parties for people that were on the same Reddit subreddits. <clears throat> and they would have their Reddit gathering parties. But like I was a Tumblr girl, so I was just like kind of chilling. And that was just like the vibe. And so Reddit's been in and out of my life the whole time, but I just never used it. But all the guys I like was with now he was also the burner. So he was a burner, like burning man. And he was a Redditor and I never got along with any of his bubbles. Like, let me tell you this when I say this. I was so excited to be me Burning Man people. And then when I kind of did, I was like, we are not a vibe. Like, this is not a vibe for me. So it's amazing to like bubble hop and meet new people. But I kind of like it in a way because like, again, like Discord, like if our Discord group got together, we would have so much fun though. Right? Like we would have so much fun. So that's what like I look at Reddit and everything. But I've dated people that were definitely like, they would hope like they would do these things and I kind of liked it. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Reddit gathering parties sound so neckbeardy. No, no, no. These ones were hippie gatherings because they're burners. They're different. Like they're Redditors who like hippie stuff. Like his mom was a hippie. His like uncle was an artist in Seattle. Like, you know what I mean? Like these are like hippie Redditors who get together to talk about like the establishment, but also like how we're hippies. Oh, but they don't smoke weed. It was really weird. Like he never drank or smoked anything, which is like very interesting. So anyways, fun little story. Imagine asking for a source in the Reddit comments. Scary, Scary huh? huh? While average Redditors have changed over the years, the mindset and body fat percentage remains the same. Being an atheist is like enjoying Marvel movies in a sense that it's fine, but when you make it your entire personality, well, this might be a little harsh, but it needs to be said. You're a Redditor. So what have we learned today? Well, if you want to ruin something, give it to Reddit. And soon enough, you'll poison the well for anybody interested. And rest in peace to A.A. A. Lewis, responsible for a historic internet moment that will live in infamy for years to come. Next time you see one of these people embarrassing themselves, think about that. Think about where they came from. Here's one more uh, funny post I just want to share before I end the video. Um, I found this one on r slash Afghanistan when the Taliban invaded. Uh, somebody was saying how their village was invaded by the Taliban and, uh, you know, they were very scared. And someone left a comment saying, praying for you and your family. And this benevolent gentleman replied, if only praying ever did anything. And another thing I noticed while researching this video, uh, people still use the term Sky Daddy, unironically. Oh. Like it's 2012, which is uh, very funny and embarrassing secondhand. Did you guys okay. ever go to the atheism? Um, excuse me, excuse me, Asmin. This is my personal washing time stuff. Thank you. Okay, that is interesting for two reasons. One, one, we have to fully accept that language will change. Everything we're doing now is cringe, and in 10 years, it will be cringier, right? So, like, first and foremost, everything is cringe. It doesn't matter if you say Sky Daddy. It doesn't matter what you say. And just letting us know that you haven't adapted to new culture. And then the question is, is, like, when do you have to adapt to new culture so you don't look like you've fallen off? And that is something that, like, you have to decide for yourself, right? Another way to look at this is that it's kind of beautiful. These people have communities, and also, this is what I mean to say when people settle into a bubble and they usually don't expand out of it. This is what I mean to say, right? When you make your whole personality this thing that you're doing, it's fine. I'm not even criticizing you for it. I just think being aware of it is really important. And that's why I try really hard to pay attention to like which version of the self should you prioritize your attention onto. Now, a lot of people choose religion. So you might choose religion. A lot of people choose their queerness. A lot of people choose their skin color. A lot of people choose a belief in a God or not a God, right? Like, so atheism, Reddit atheism. It's really about you, though. You get to make this decision. What part of your personality do you want to be the most dominant? Or do you want to kind of like bubble hop based off of like what part of your personality you're expressing or your belief systems or your hobbies, right? 
Obviously, I would recommend bubble hopping as much as possible, but then knowing which part of yourself is the most dominant in your your real life. So for me, obviously, the dream is to be all the Britneys at once, which I can only ever do at home by myself or with my partner because I'm completely unmasked at home. I'm just completely myself. Every mouth noise I make, every weird like singing thing I do, every weird like little habit I have, like I just unleash it onto my partner. <laughs> And onto my cat and onto my being. But I would never do that in public, right? I'm very like good at knowing like how not to be myself in public because not everyone's going to accept you, which is why people do live on Reddit, which is why people do live in these bubbles because it's nice. They can be a big part of themselves all the time. But the question is, are you obligated to to grow out of this um, bubble? And I don't think you are. I think if you're looking for joy and you're looking for fulfillment and you're looking for more introspection, yeah, you just, it's not about obligation. You have to, like, it's not even about obligation, like in a moral sense. It's just a, yeah, you're just never going to grow if you don't leave the bubble, right? Like you're not going to grow unless you do something different than what you've been doing. But if you want to stay the same, like we were watching Arielle Scarcella, God bless her, And she was on the Jubilee thing. And she's like, we're the ones who don't want to change. You guys want to change things. We don't want to stay. We want to stay the same. It's like people will tell you they literally are going to stay stagnant. And you're looking at them like, why do you want to stay there? And it's because they're comfortable. They're allowed to be comfortable. You're allowed to live your one life on earth feeling comfortable, right? But not at the expense of someone else's comfort if you're really aggressive about it. So obviously, every person you meet is going to make you feel uncomfortable about yourself because they're going to challenge how you see yourself. And even this video here, this guy's kind of bullying uh, Reddit atheists, right? He's kind of bullying them. And he even says we should bully them, basically, right? The whole video is basically justifying the bullying of neckbeards. And at the same time, like, I just let them be, let them do their thing. I don't care. Like, you do you, but also, like, kind of fun to make fun of you. But also, it's kind of fun to make every fun of everybody. You know, I feel like if you can't make fun of your own group, you don't really see it as cringe as it is. Every group is cringe. Being a part of the debate crew is cringe. Being a part of the BDSM bubbles cringe. Like everything is cringe. Being like super into Jesus is cringe. Like it's all just cringy. And the best way to celebrate your cringe is to be like, oh yeah, we're cringy, but we love it. Like it's all got an ick to it. You know what I mean? Is criticism bullying? I think he goes beyond criticism, right? He is going beyond criticism in this video, which I think is fine. Like, I have no problem with it. But it's also, like, within uh, okay kind of bullying. I don't think bullying is always bad. I think bullying is a spectrum. I think, like, but I do think if you think you're smarter than the atheist Redditors and you're punching down and you're saying, like, look how stupid and fat you are and look how ugly you are and look how dumb your fashion is. Yeah, you're, like, that's more than criticism. Like, what do you, that's not criticism, right? That's like bullying. So like, it's fine. Bully all you want, but that's what it is, <clears throat> you know? Cases insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So staying in your same bubble you're unhappy in, but wanting your life to change is literally insane. It is definitely, I wouldn't say it's literally insane, but it is literally insane if you mean figuratively. I would say it's very human and it doesn't seem to matter if you're only goal is to stay alive and maybe have babies. And that's the irony. If your only goal as a human is to stay alive and maybe have babies, you don't have to do much. You just kind of have to be alive. You have to eat enough food, basically, and drink enough water. It's like the most basic things. But if you want to be introspective, if you want to have a different relationship with people, if you want to have a different relationship with yourself, that's different. Then you have to do a lot more work, right? Um... But yeah, I just like, I like videos like this because it's a nice reminder that I think we all look like this to somebody. And I think that's what we need to radically accept is we all look like a neckbeard, fedora wearing freak to somebody. And the question is like, why is that? You know, do you guys ever see that video I showed on stream, I don't know, forever ago of the really, really rich people eating fruit off of like their servers? That is so cringe. Even like extra quote hot people with money are the cringiest LARPers I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know what I mean? It's just cringe. And I think accepting that we're all cringe is a much better like example of radical acceptance than assuming like, oh, I'm less cringe because I'm X, Y, and Z. Like we're all less cringe on a spectrum and more cringe on a spectrum. I think that's the radical acceptance I had to accept about the BDSM community because I love my BDSM community. But it's cringy the way y'all take it so seriously, including myself. Okay, it's a little cringy. But at the same time, like, I love it. And you're not going to take away that joy from me. Okay. Like, you're not going to take it away from me. You're not going to take it away from me. 
I'm gonna like it whether you like it or not. You're not gonna take it away from me. It's the way that I feel so free. Ooh, this is a good 90s song right here I'm making up right now. Ooh, this is good. This is like a real 90s. Isn't this like a kid's like 90s song? You know what I mean? I would like to transcend cringe. Good luck. Let me know if you figure it out. <laughs> Actually, I think the only way to transcend cringe is maybe to remain silent, which in and of itself is cringe. You know what I mean? Like, you, like maybe the way to transcend cringe is to like almost be like a silent nomad, but then you're cringe because you're not talking. It's like enjoy your life. I don't know. It's all kind of cringe to me, you know. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 